I know the topic um, that got you all here um, is the state of tourism on Grand Bahama Island. Well, I'm going to depart from that direction and take you on a different path. But before I do, I will reiterate to you what you already know. The 482 room memories Grand Bahama Beach Resort is closed. The 545 room Breakers Key section of the Grand Lucayan Beach Resort is closed. Together, representing an inventory shortfall of 1,024 rooms, or approximately 40%. Therefore, airlift to the destination has been impacted. We have lost the bulk of our winter program from Canada, representing nine gateways, and we are now left with Toronto and Montreal. Additionally, the summer program, which would have commenced the 25th of May, from 13 U.S. gateways via Vacation Express, a subsidiary of Sunwing Vacations, has also been lost due to the severe reduction in hotel inventory. You are aware that Treasure Bay Casino is closed because of the hurricane, of course, and coincidentally, their expiration of the operator's extension agreement also came about most recently, so they have moved on. So in summary, we have approximately 1,100 industry workers that are back on the employment, unemployment line. So we all knew that. You just wanted to hear me say it. OK. <laughs> so how are we moving forward? Where's my guy? Andre. Anyway, how are we moving forward? Well. The 276-room Viva Fortuna All-Inclusive reopened on schedule, better than before, with a $4 million upgrade. Recent occupancies have been in the 90% and higher. Viva is expecting the Alpator Italian Charter to return in June, and that will keep its occupancies high well into September, the duration of the Italian Charter Program. The 198-room Lighthouse Point is open and has been experiencing sold-out dates and will continue with the arrival of Faith Fest, which comes in today. As you can see, the 186-room Pelican Bay Hotel and Suites is open and proposing future upgrades that would include gutting of their rooms. Uh, but it would be done in a phased um, manner, not to interrupt guests, low impact construction. And um, they have already added a spa and a gym will soon follow. And I'd like to take this opportunity to actually congratulate Pelican Bay as their very own Della Bridgewater is a Cacique finalist in the human resources category. When Mick said that I had won a kayak, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's OK, Mick. Uh, many people confuse it. It's a cacique. The cacique is our industry standard award. <laughs> it is our academy of the industry where we dress up, we look our best, and we come out and celebrate the best of the best in the tourism industry. And we're proud to have nine finalists from Grand Bahama Island. So I dare say that we must have been doing something right. The 118-room Castaways is open, having completed its repairs. The 198-unit Island Seas is open. The 70-room Old Bahama Bay Marina Resort in West End is open. The 65-unit Ocean Reef is open, as well as the 32-room Blue Marlin Cove in the West is open. And the 31-room Bell Channel Inn is also open. Our tours and attractions are all up and running. I would like to think that we're not in a bad state of affairs. Do I get anyone to agree with me? 
No one agrees with me. Okay, I guess I'd like to see the glass half full. Okay. So, um, given all of what I've just said, our benchmark ought not to return to the 25 rooms or the 178,000 arrivals achieved after the Sunwing partnership. Rather, we should seek to return to the 4,000 room level where we were during the 2000 to 2002 Renaissance period. During that time, Grand Bahamas air arrivals stood at 300,000 plus. That's the benchmark that we're aiming for. If we must look back, however briefly, it has to be to this period of branded hotel product and internationally renowned events like the ABC televised Superstars Athletic Challenge. And at that time, the city was so clean, we used to get complaints that the island looked sterile from guests, believe it or not. That's just how clean we were. Also, as a business community, as difficult as it may seem to digest, and if we are to be honest with ourselves, Hurricane Matthew has presented an opportunity for Grand Bahama and Grand Bahamian stakeholders to return to industry sustaining practices that we strayed away from that have proven, that have a proven track record. And obviously that was the time of which we were in excess of 300,000 air arrivals. We must be prepared to compete and win. Compete and win business delivering satisfying destination experiences for each other and for arriving guests, and we have to start today. Opportunity number one, beautification. I'm gonna look at you, Chuck. Okay. <laughs> clean, up, clean up the destination of Grand Bahama. Our island is dirty. We were actually showing wear and tear long before October 6th. Again, if we were to be honest with ourselves, we've got to remove the garbage, paint and repair buildings, and reinstitute street signage and directional signage, but signage that reflects the flavor of the destination. Most recently, the Ministry of Tourism met with the Port Authority, Environmental Health and Sanitation Services to discuss a partnership to clean up our city, our island. We are now a part of an aggressive a plan called Litter Free to address the post-hurricane untidiness of Grand Bahama Island. Opportunity number two, air and sea traffic inventory. Grand Bahama's airport turnaround costs remain a concern and must be addressed. We believe it should be addressed jointly um, by public and private uh, sector arrangements outlining clear and realistic objectives that speak to the destination's position and the goals that are in sync with the country. Grand Bahama's proximity to the United States should make us the destination of choice for cruise ferry and cruise and stay guests. This is a natural competitive advantage that we should dominate and there's room for more. Uh, this is one of the tools that we use to position ourselves and um, remove ourselves from the rest because no one else has ferry service that acts as transportation. We take it for granted, but it's, it, it's significant. Not everyone flies. Many people will drive into Florida and they will jump on the Bellaria, they will jump on the Grand Celebration, they will have a cruise experience and then they can come and enjoy our destination. So, opportunity number three, local investment. It's time for those who are qualified to become true stakeholders of the tourism sector on Grand Bahama. There is a huge untapped developmental opportunity for non-traditional and more boutique product that appeals to families and longer stay guests. Guests who come to our island want to be a part of a community. They really want what we call the true, true Bahamian experience. They want to interact with Bahamians. They want to shop in our food stores like we do. They want to do the things that we do because they're here 
for a foreign or a unique experience. And these are some of the ways in which that experience can be delivered. So it's time for more local second home ownership. When this happens, the giants in the sector such as Airbnb, Booking.com, HomeAwayFromHome.com, and the family of sites offering this type of accommodation will be entrenched in the new Grand Bahama Island product offering. It is also a known fact that income and taxes generated from second home ownership can be in the triple digits. Opportunity number four, become creators and owners of new tourism products. Partner with the Ministry of Tourism in dispelling the myth that there is nothing to do on Grand Bahama. There is a little known fact that there are at least 40 tours and attractions that our guests come and do every day that they're here, if they want to. And if they haven't done them all, they will come back. So that's the beginning. Um, so we have to be a part of communicating. In fact, we need to go out and experience our island, and then we will know what there is to do on Grand Bahama Island. This is a fun place, and it's not just fun for international guests. It's fun for our domestic guests. You know, um, families are traveling throughout our islands so that their children can have the experiences that other children come all the way here to the Bahamas to have. So please, um, don't sneeze at it. We've got to be proactive in developing more of these tours and attractions. So opportunity number five, and I believe we'll all agree with this, live entertainment. Be one or part of a partnership that brings back nighttime live Bahamian entertainment. That is one of our greatest deficiencies, is that we do not have a nightlife. And, uh, it's, um, and we don't. It's an opportunity. So I've addressed what you can do, not just to recover our destination, but to propel us forward. So I'm just going to speak to you very briefly on um, what the Ministry of Tourism has been doing. The Ministry of Tourism is presently designing a new marketing position for Grand Bahama that includes a greater awareness and push for the multiple destination experience on one island. The new promotion is intended to highlight nature, based and cultural product, place greater emphasis on sports and religious tourism as the main source of groups to our island. I spent many years on the road um, convincing travel agents that if they did not know where to send their clients, if they sent them to Grand Bahama Island, we can guarantee that they would have an all Bahamas vacation experience because of the East and West sustainable experiences and then the city of Freeport experiences. And it holds a lot of weight. Um, it's true. I'm sure when we all need a getaway and we can't leave Grand Bahama Island, well, where do you go? You go east or you go west. And you are away from Freeport. You have that little break that you've been looking for. So we call it a multiple island vacation experience. So therein lies another opportunity. Some of the things that I spoke to requires facilities. The sporting initiatives that we want to embark upon, we need facilities. We're looking for entrepreneurs who want to build that standalone gym so that we can get those basketball events and other events that we can house here year round. Earlier, when I introduced the team, I gave you a glimpse into the productivity, and now I will take you month by month um, of the initiatives uh, that we have been up to, and there have been many. Okay, great. I'll read from here if you look there. We have had the Gathering of the Saints Conference, uh, May 20th to the 26th. Faith Fest, as I mentioned, with 600, comes in the 24th to the 26th. They have already started to arrive. We have a book launch, family planning seminar. 
then we are our supporters of the Dog Days Marathon. Again, marathons are uh, the types of events that we really try to get here to Grand Bahama and we support because of the fact that we've got th this great environment in which to have marathons. We will be doing a Coastal Awareness Month coming up in April. We've got the Northern Bahama Sports Symposium that I mentioned earlier. We've got the 19th annual Pelican Point Festival. And believe me, if you haven't been, please make it a point to go this year. Last year, I'm, I'm certain that we have more guests than local Bahamians. It's become that popular. And the eastern, that part of the island is absolutely breathtaking. We have the Extreme Kayak Fishing Tournament, uh, which is, I think we're in our, our fourth or our fifth year. It's very popular. We have um, uh, fishermen that come over and they go fishing in kayaks. And they have been known to bring in, yes. <laughs> I don't, th a marlin. I think the first year it was, anyway, really, really fish that are bigger than the kayak. And that's why it's called the extreme kayak fishing event. The West End Speed Boat Race is coming up in April. Junkanoo Carnival kickoff. We've got um, the fifth West End Junior Sailing Regatta the seventh annual Rugby Fest that we're supporting. We are going to unroll or unravel or roll out the second annual air show, which was a huge success last year. Last year, we tied the air show to the Junkanoo Carnival uh, to introduce it, and this year, we're standing it alone. We've got another religious conference coming in. Then we've got the third annual fire Car Food and Heritage <laughs> Festival in the East. There's going to be a lacrosse tournament here. And then, of course, we would be, we are, have been preparing for Goombe Summer, uh, which starts, I think it's July 6th, and will go for four weeks. So those are some of the upcoming events and initiatives and some of the things that we have been working toward. Um, and all of these activities means business to Grand Bahama Island. So, in conclusion, it is clear that if we want Grand Bahama to succeed, we must be participants in the process. We must form alliances and partnerships and engage out-of-the-box thinking to plan and execute creative activities and programs that will lift the destination and get Grand Bahama noticed in the marketplace again. Our team is ready, we're willing, and we're able to make this happen. We need your buy-in. We need your involvement. We need your financial and in-kind contributions. With the growing resilience of the U.S. economy, but then with the market thinking of Buy American, we have no choice but to take our island into our own hands. Tourism's demise or, or revival will depend on the decisions we make and actions we take today. There can be no quick fixes, band-aids, shoddy repair work, or hit or miss solutions. We must move towards sustainable fixes. Here at the Ministry of Tourism, our work is never done because the marketplace is fluid. It's always changing. So my appeal or my charge to you today is very simple. It's to let us work together for a brand new and improved Grand Bahama Island. And I know this sounds like a cliche, but it's so true. And it's that tourism is everybody's business. Thank you.